and welcome. We are with Rahil Khurshid, uh, the head of news, politics, and government at Twitter India. Rahil, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. How important is the Indian market for Twitter? Very important. Uh, in fact, Twitter is one of the top ten markets globally for uh, India. Is one of the top ten markets globally for Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have noticed uh, over the last few months, we have built a team here. We're expanding. We're recruiting more people. Uh, and you would have seen, a, you would have seen the manifestation of how important Twitter, of of how important India is for Twitter, in uh, a bunch of uh, what we call only on Twitter moments. So be that such as retirement, uh, of which Twitter was an integral part, be that uh, the general election, uh, or be that just yesterday or day before, the fact uh, that uh, the Mars Orbiter mission uh, made its debut on Twitter and. Uh, that was an incredible, incredible moment uh, for both the country and for Twitter to be a, to be a part of that moment in the country. Uh, so, what is it that Twitter is doing differently in India as compared with other markets? You know, India is a slightly more complicated market than uh, than a lot of other markets. So, our dive, our our uh, our strategy here uh, is to be a lot more careful with what we invest in, uh, who we hire, how we hire and what areas we focus on. Uh, it also means a lot of travel for, uh, for, the, for the team members that we, that we are, like currently about seven of us. Uh, the linguistic diversity means that uh, the media markets are different. So we all have to uh, go to different media markets to ensure that uh, Twitter is optimized for those media partners in their own languages or I I in English across geographies. So from a strategy point of view, what we're really working on is that while uh, across across the country, as people approach Twitter, as more and more people come online and they discover this, this magical platform where they can communicate with the prime minister's office or the prime minister himself, where they can communicate with the uh, superstar Amitabh Bachchan or the Ma Mars Orbiter, uh, they're able to do that smoothly, they're, they're able to do that flawlessly, and they're able to do that in uh, media and languages that they're comfortable in. So what is the kind of localizing that we will see Twitter doing perhaps in the uh, you know, coming few years uh, as far as the Indian market is concerned? You know, we've done a bunch of experimentation around, uh, uh, around the SMS product. Uh, you'll see a lot more innovation being uh, driven in that direction. You'll also see a lot more innovation dr being driven in the missed call product. Uh, we've had uh, examples uh, in the general elections of the Prime Minister's office, uh, now, the, now Prime Minister's office actually, then the leader of opposition, uh, then the, then the main, uh, main leader of the campaign, opposite campaign, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, the, national, uh, the Indian National Congress using the missed call product to their advantage. Uh, you'll see a lot more innovation being driven in that uh, general direction. Okay, uh, you know, since politics is uh, uh, is an integral part of uh, the kind of content that uh, sells on social media, how important is social diplomacy? Uh, absolutely, absolutely important. If you've seen, uh, if you just followed the elections on Twitter, you wouldn't miss a thing. In fact, uh, what was very gratifying for for me personally and for Twitter as a platform. Uh, was it five years ago when I was tracking the elections as a reporter? Uh, there was one politician, Dr. Shashi Tharoor, on the platform with 5,000 followers, with a lot of hype and hoopla and skepticism around his presence on Twitter. People weren't comfortable with the fact that he was sharing his uh, he was he was setting his own media agenda and he was sharing information directly with uh, with his audiences. Uh, we've gotten past that to the point wherein the prime minister of the country now uh, hasn't appointed, so to speak, a media advisor because he doesn't need to. His combined audience across his two uh, accounts, PMO India and at Narendra Modi, is more than the largest newspaper of this country, uh, which is a very powerful place to be in from a social diplomacy and social communication point of view. Uh, the platform has given an ability to, starting from the prime minister of the country, to communicate directly with his constituents. Uh, tell his own story, put forward his point of view, communicate and talk about his policies uh, and 
put them forward in a public live conversational manner as it has also conveyed this very ability to people who can want to consume this information and communicate with uh, the powers that be communicate with uh, their favorite sports personalities their heroes uh, and their icons uh, from a social uh, diplomacy point of view what are the do's and don'ts that one must keep in mind uh, you know the, this conversation is always subjective depending on the context but uh, having worked with uh, a range of actors in this space uh, i can say that uh, the holy trinity of uh, insight personality and information if one can find a balance uh, and the mass orbiter account for example is is an ex amazing example of having found that balance it's funny it's insightful and it's informative uh, that really really works because what people want is a direct connect people want to be able to talk to you directly people want to be able to find out who you are you know the prime minister is as we speak going to the united states of america earlier we had no idea what his journey would be like but he's he left yesterday he tweeted a photo as he was leaving he he there was a uh, there was a layover in frankfurt he tweeted a photo there and uh, as he landed in america he's going to tweet a photo there so you now have a very fair idea a physical idea of what the prime minister's journey looked like and that's phenomenal you know uh just sort of like persisting on uh that kind of content which is personal which is direct uh which reaches out to people on a one to one basis uh that content works really really well uh, going forward how do you see the consumption of social media changing in india you know uh i i'd like to believe we are still in uh the early stages of what social looks like in india uh there are about 200 million people who are online and uh, there are 800 more million people that need to come online uh, and more for a billion people actually and as as uh, as news consumption as content consumption habits uh get formed basis uh, the bandwidth that people are using basis the cell phones that people are using social is going to be an integral part of where this content is consumed if you look at uh, the latest data from uh, Mary Meeker's report for 2014 you will notice that people spend about 166 minutes uh on a daily basis on their cell phone the same data for your televisions is 96 minutes uh which tells you how quickly uh information consumption habits are evolving and generally going in the direction of mobile it's it's great news for platforms like ourselves because we are mobile first and uh, we know for a fact that uh, as more and more people come on board our platforms become the touch points for them to communicate with who who they want to communicate with uh their friends their icons uh, the institutions that they need services from uh the prime minister's office the the stars the sports stars the the film stars and as as i said earlier the 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 mars orbiter you know uh i think as we go forward and as as more and more people come on board consuming content via social will become second nature okay and how will uh, uh you know uh communication change over the next few years it already has it already has in so many ways uh gone are the days when uh when the communication regime of the 1960s wherein you could basically put out a press release and uh, where in i when i was growing up the only source of news that i had was a bulletin at 8:30 in the night uh, as that changed and 24/7 te television channels came came up i could access news whenever i wanted to through the day uh, but i needed uh, access to a tv certainly i don't need access to a tv anymore i can access information uh on the move on my cell phone from directly from the source and uh, nowhere was it evident uh, more than in this election wherein every news break that happened happened on uh, on uh, on twitter as far as the election is concerned if you missed the entire election you just logged in on the 16th of may uh, all you needed to see on that day was the prime minister's tweet acknowledging his historic mandate and that really tells you so much more about how content habits have already changed and where they are going 
uh, with respect to where we're going with social, where we're going with uh, consumption habits next. How important are news breaks uh, for a platform like Twitter? Extremely important uh, for any platform. We particularly excel at it. Uh, our platform lends itself to the format. It, it gives everyone the ability to break news uh, from wherever they are, whatever they're seeing. And uh, what's interesting is that globally news organizations now have found a way of harnessing that power, harnessing that user generated content uh, to their own end. So you'd see all and every news break, the first piece of content will be user generated. And that's how it will be because people ha now have the ability to capture those stories themselves. And newsrooms still have to deploy resources. So take any story, for example, wherever it breaks, the likelihood of someone in that area having captured it on their cell phone and put it on Twitter right. is much, much higher than a news organization getting to that spot and breaking that story and then telling the rest of the world that, hey, this has happened. So yeah, absolutely. From our point of view, uh, we are, we're constantly optimizing uh, for, for those kinds of moments. Okay, what are, the, uh, what are the few things that you like or dislike about social media? I don't dislike anything. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like is the fact that, you know, I can, uh, yesterday I, uh, I tweeted at the mass orbiter and it tweeted back at me. Uh, it was a great moment. Uh, or day before, the fact that the mass orbiter communicated with the mass curiosity. You know, these are, uh, these are these are moments that uh, when you participate in them, when you consume them, are speak to the beauty of humanity. We just coordinated a massive relief effort for the JNK floods, purely basis social media and Twitter, and it was incredible to see. It was very moving to see uh, so many people with the uh, uh, with a common agenda come together united by uh, social, united by internet, united by Twitter to uh, help out with the cause. The internet gives you the ability to, who, to, to be whosoever you want to be. Some people use it negatively, most people I feel use it positively and increasingly uh, because it also gives you the ability to form communities. Uh, most people who want to use it positively are forming those communities uh, and are doing their bit to make the world a better place to live in. Uh, you know, so far communities is uh, uh, the way most successful social media campaigns uh, uh, have gone, at least in India. Do you see that changing? I don't actually. I don't. Uh, as communication uh, becomes simpler and formation of these communities becomes easier right. for platforms like ourselves, which are interest-based platforms, which are public and conversational platforms. Mm -hmm. I made hundreds of friends myself as a user on the platform, on Twitter. Uh, just spaces the fact that I am, uh, I was a Twitter user, you know. Uh, and that community formation, uh, and I, I just had a sample of that uh, play out while we were coordinating the relief efforts for, for JNK floods. Mm -hmm. I found, uh, I found, uh, I found friends, you know, who, who came and helped and I had no idea they, they I had no idea they would, they existed. Suddenly, like the moment a call goes out, you have hundreds and hundreds of people saying, hey, I can do this. I had, I had some really uh, random person who I had not heard of, who, who I didn't know, uh, write to me saying, hey, I am a small manufacturer of bed sheets. Can I, uh, do? just tell me how many you need and I'll, I'll have them shipped. Uh, similarly, medicines, you know, people contributing with whatever they had. It's, I had some people reach out to me from, uh, from Patiala and they found out I was, we were doing this relief effort. And they uh, said that uh, we had put, a, put up a small st stall in this mall and uh, we're collecting some relief material there. Uh, the scale was extremely small, but the gesture mm -hmm. was just beautiful. You know, you, the fact that they, they read it on the internet, they connected to us via the internet and uh, it all led to this consolidated massive effort, perhaps this largest coordinated effort of citizens coming together to coordinate relief uh, was incredible. Well, on the so, lighter yeah. side, what's the craziest thing that uh, uh, you've done using social media? 
I would say that talking to the mass orbiter, <laughs> which which happened uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, is pretty incredible. I mean, one doesn't sort of in their wildest uh, dreams or realms of imagination thinks that you'd be talking to an object uh, that's stationed in the orbit of Mars, and here you are being able to communicate with it in real time uh, as if it were a person. And that's that's been pretty phenomenal. All right, Rahil, thank you so much thank for you joining so much. us. Thanks a lot.